But there is also a burgeoning fight between President Trump and the House Oversight Committee over uh, the president's sure. personal financial records. Uh, and that went from Capitol Hill to a courtroom today. President Trump's lawyers are suing to try to block his accounting firm from turning over years of financial documents to House Democrats. Federal judge declined to rule today, but seemed to question the Trump legal team's position that the Democrats' subpoena was an overreach of congressional powers. Joining me now is a member of the Oversight Committee, Congressman John Sarbanes of Maryland, a Democrat. Congressman Sarbanes, I'm guessing you've heard a little bit of this conversation. I want to get to some yeah. specifics in a minute, but I want to go to this larger thing. Do you, under, do you buy this notion that maybe the American public isn't sure what the priorities are when it comes to oversight of this president? Well, I think the public certainly understands that we want to get to the bottom of a series of questions, very legitimate questions. And as you've been pointing out, our committees are engaged uh, very deliberately uh, in pursuing those inquiries. Uh, but I would say right now, the thing that's come out of the Mueller report that to me is the red alert that points us in the direction of what we have to be doing and doing very, very quickly is to prepare against the Russians coming again in 2020. I mean, Mueller was very clear about how this uh, meddling and interference in our campaign in 2016 happened. Uh, we, we've learned all about these disinformation campaigns. Yep. That's basically a form of warfare that's being waged against our democracy. And then we have all these foreign agents and foreign money operating inside our democracy. Let's get going on this. Let's move quickly. And you know, House I ask Democrats you. did okay. that. Uh, look, Congressman, I remember talking to you before sure. you guys took over. And you had laid out a campaign reform agenda, a series of ideas to reform our campaign system a bit to try to mitigate against this. Where are the votes? Where are the, so, uh, 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 where we, are these, yeah. I mean, there is a the, whole, the, in part one of the Mueller report, in the declination decisions, Mueller is not making an argument that laws weren't broken. Mueller is making an argument that the laws are too ambiguous. Right, and we can make, we can make it clearer. We can pass um, new laws that get rid of these gray areas. You guys are in the majority, show, where are they? We've done it, HR1 did that. We passed that in H.R. 1. That was the first thing we did. We what told the American people, you give us the gavel, we'll pass it. Now, here's the problem, Chuck. On the other side of the Capitol, you have Mitch McConnell with his arms folded, standing at the gates of the democracy, saying to the American public, you shall not pass. The onus is on him. We put all those reforms that you and I talked about months ago. I understand that, but, what it, that but, bill. but there isn't an, I mean, I'm talking about the specifics of, for instance, how do you deal with stolen hacked material? Like there are some specific ways you guys could be doing pieces of legislation to tighten up these laws and force some votes, force that's the Republicans to, to that's, pick a That's pick a great a side. segue because that's exactly what we're doing. Last week we introduced Title III of H.R. 1 as a standalone bill, the Election Security Act. Uh, that was introduced by Zoe Lofgren, House mm -hmm. Admin, Benny Thompson on Homeland Security, and myself as chair of the Democracy Reform Task Force. So it's going right to the heart of this issue of protecting the ballot box. We're breaking it out into a component part bill that can be a standalone mm -hmm. and put the question to Republicans in the House and certainly to Mitch McConnell on the Senate side, okay, we've broken this out. Do you care about protecting the democracy? If so, Let's have a vote in the House. We'll do that because we control the gavel, but let's have a vote in the Senate as well to protect our democracy. So it's up to McConnell. Does he want to join the fight to protect our democracy against foreign intrusion or not? The onus is on him. And I think this gets to your larger challenge here is that a lot of the subpoenas get the attention. Some of this legislation doesn't. And that's where I go back to prioritization. I know what your committee is prioritizing. I know what Schiff's committee is prioritizing. I know what uh, Nadler's committee is prioritizing. How much coordination should you guys be having and should you have more and should one of you have more priority right now? Well, we certainly are going to coordinate and we've been coordinating and I think the decision, for example, uh, to break out the Election Security Act um, and begin to push that forward is a perfect example of how we're coordinating that effort and we're prioritizing. You're absolutely right. The average person out there um, can't be blamed for getting confused by all these things that are coming at them. And so we have to stay focused. And, and the main focus, Chuck, 
is how do you fight corruption broadly, a rigged system in the country which people are upset about. Mm -hmm. You see a voting system that's been corrupted by the Russians, but also by people in our own country who are putting obstacles up for people when they want to get to the ballot box. You see corrupt ethics, you see corrupt campaign finance, and you see a corrupt economy because it's working for a very small number of people and big corporations. People are fed up with the corruption. They want to fight the corruption. They want to fix the democracy. And Democrats are saying, we're going to do those yeah. things for the people. That's the brand that I think makes what, sense for what the do you, Democrats. What do, you, um, what do you have left in your arsenal to try to get the White House to cooperate well, look, we've got the committee investigations going forth. That will be but they're not um, they're not important. complying. And then and then what we have is we have actual meaningful legislative proposals, which is what members of Congress should be doing and what the public expects us to do. And we're going to keep breaking out and introducing these component parts, whether it has to do with election security, whether it has to do with disclosure of campaign finance, voting reforms to make sure that people can get to the ballot box without running that obstacle course. Right. These are all important measures. Gerrymandering reform. Everything I just mentioned to you, Chuck, has the support of 75, 80, 85 yeah. percent of Americans. They just want to see us get it done. House Democrats are ready to do it. The problem is on the Senate side with Mitch McConnell, who, like I said, right out of central casting, has decided he wants to be the face of opposition to democracy reform. Congressman, one last question to you. The Attorney General asked a U.S. attorney from Connecticut to review the origins of the Russia probe. What was interesting about the Attorney General's decision is that he, it was a review. He didn't appoint a special prosecutor. Um, and the person he picked is somebody that has pretty good bipartisan credentials and is seen as sort of a, a, a fair-minded U.S. attorney. Does that tell you that Barr was trying to placate the White House? Or, or does that at all make you feel better about Barr, what Barr did? Or are you still troubled that Barr is, review, is reviewing the investigators, if not necessarily investigating the investigators? Yeah, so it's a relatively new story, so we'll have to see where it goes. Obviously, President Trump's M.O. is always to investigate the investigators, and to some degree, that's what Barr has authorized here. Um, you know, on the other hand, I'm pretty confident that anyone looking at the origins right. of this investigation into contacts between uh, Russia and the Trump administration will con or the Trump campaign will conclude that those investigated investigations were warranted. Okay. Beginning those made sense when you look at this legion of contacts that was occurring. So we'll see where it goes. All right, Congressman John Sarbanes, Democrat from Maryland. And like I said, I know you've been on the campaign reform uh, train for quite some time. Thanks for coming out and sharing your views, sir. Much appreciate it. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.